What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I got Trev here with us today and we're gonna help teach you guys how to hit the golf ball high, how to launch it low, and kind of figure out when to use these shots on the golf course. So talking about trajectories, high shots, low shots, I think this uh, piggybacks well off the previous video of draws and fades. Yes. It's important to know how to hit them, but again, it doesn't mean you just got to go out there and free ball it hitting every shot shape, every trajectory just because. Correct. I think everybody, like, we're really good examples of this, of like our stock shots yes. go a certain height. Yes. Right. And like, I've, I've very much been a lower ball hitter over my career. You've very much been a higher ball hitter over your career. And you've, we've both embraced those kind of roles that our ball flights kind of have. Yes. And we just kind of stick to them. Yes. Obviously, if you play enough golf, you're gonna find yourself in situations where it's like, okay, I have to launch this higher because yes. there's a tree in front of me or something in the, in the way, or I have to keep this under the wind or keep it under some tree branches. And I'm sure we've all been in those situations before. And maybe we've tried to hit that shot and we haven't really had the correct either setup or just kind of the correct map of how to do that. Right, so I'll hit the high shot and how I go about it is just like the previous video with shot shapes. It's gonna start with setup. I'm gonna have a stock setup. Now from here, personally, I make the stance a little wider and we're talking half a step in both directions. From here, the only other thing I'm gonna do different is when I try to come back into impact, I'm trying to have the shaft pretty vertical, not a whole lot of shaftling as that starts to deal off the club. Okay, so that makes sense. So you're yeah. trying to get the, like you said, when you're getting back to the golf ball at your impact point, yes, you're trying to let, more or less, you're trying to let that club head get a little more released as you're getting to impact, not so much after impact. Yes, right? so yeah, I'm wanting it to be, the way I've described it is the club's at its truest loft rather than when the shaft lean is de-lofting what the, the original lie right. or lie angle, loft angle is. Of it. Gotcha, so that angle that we have, that angle of attack at impact is gonna be just a little bit higher than we would see right. for a stock shot. Right, Okay. so stock setup, then half a step in both directions, then again, I'm gonna start to have a more arm swinging motion. So the arc is more in front of me. And you're gonna see that my exit, the exit's gonna be much more between my shoulder and my head versus down here in the rib cage armpit gotcha. area. So we're paying attention to two things. We're paying attention yes. to where the club works up at the start and where it releases and finishes during the follow through. Correct. And then what club? Seven. seven, yeah, that's definitely a higher trajectory for seven iron. Well, and the other thing to notice too is I made a very small divot, just about picked it. So yep. that tells you the club's coming in very shallow. Correct. This way, so I'm picking it rather than yeah. really hit, compressed and hit, de hit, hit one with a little more compression or a little more of an angle of attack here. Just yeah. to kind of everyone for everyone to see at home like what yeah. that divot looks like. Yes, so this will be more of a stock swing. Yeah, so just, let's just make a stock swing to be able to compare the differences there. Definitely more compressed. And the launch is a little bit lower, but yeah, that big thing you can pay attention to is what that divot's doing there. I yeah. think that's a key indicator of just simply what angle that club's coming yeah, down in. How you're turf presenting at. it. Right? I think too, if you can pick, if maybe it'll get picked up or not, but just the sound between the two, there was more of that like kind of picked clean, and then yes. there's more of a, a thump. Correct. To, to yeah, the, the, you can tell by the ears like there's obviously a difference in the sound. Obviously makes sense since we're trying to hit a little bit different shot. Yes. So if I'm, you know learning how to hit the golf ball high, when would I need to know, or when would I need to know when to use it when yeah. I'm on the golf course? Yeah, I'd say um, the simplest one is anytime you have to go over something, that would be the easiest way. To me, that's that's basic as far as, okay, there's a tree, mm -hmm. I have to go over, so I need a little bit more of that throwing motion. The other one, I think this starts to go towards more of an advanced player is a front pin, Yes, right? You don't have that whole lot of, you know, the pins, three to five paces on, you don't have a whole lot of room. Correct. So you want a higher ball flight that's gonna land softer and stop quicker. You know, like the, the swing I put trying to hit it high was probably like me trying to max out the height. Mm. Then you start to play with, okay, well, how how high? Correct. How much closer is it to the stock swing? And you play with that, right? That was me trying to go, okay, if I really had to hoist this one up, here's like the nth degree in which you would see me do it. Yeah, there's definitely parameters too. Yes. How much do I release the hands? How much do I continue to let the club head release? Obviously you get to play around with that at the range. Yeah, and I'd say probably the last thing to touch on is speed is your friend, more speed, more spin. Correct. So play with how much speed and when you want to apply it. Yeah, so I mean, to, to make it simple, the faster I swing, 
the easier it is for me to let that club head release yes. quicker, which obviously produces a little more higher ball flight. And we're back. And we're back. Yeah. So now we've talked high and we've seen like kind of a stock trajectory. Yes. Now, if we want to keep it low or lower, lower. Right, I think lower is the key word. We're, yes. like, we're not trying to hit it, you know, not 10 feet off the ground. It's cool to be able to hit that shot, but just for a, a normal golfer, anyone watching at home that wants to just learn ball flights and trajectories, this would be, I would say for me, my ball flight that goes a little bit lower is going to be, you know, five to 10 yards, maybe lower, maybe even less than that. Yeah. It's probably going to be less than that. But yeah. the key thing that like, like Trevino talked about is I'm changing half of it's in the setup, half of it's in how I think about swinging the golf club. Yes. Now what I want people at, that watching to understand is like, I'm not trying to change my swing. I'm trying to swing the same way. Yes. There are certain characteristics in which will change. So for me, to be completely honest with you, Ball position doesn't really dictate a difference for me. I don't try to change my ball position unless, again, I'm trying to stinger it under the under the wind. It's got to be really but low. But for a stock shot, if I'm trying to hit this, you know, close to the same distance, I'm going to set up to the golf ball with a stock stance, stock setup. And what I'm really controlling here, what I'm trying to focus on is, one, the most important thing for me is lowering the, the speed of the swing. Yeah. A lot of people confuse, okay, if I'm trying to hit a golf ball lower, They'll put that golf ball way back in their stance and they'll really try and hit down on it with a lot of speed. Well, when you do that, your angle of attack gets steeper mm -hmm. and the more speed that you swing with, the more spin you generate. Yep, and that sure. spins what gets the golf ball Take to go in the up. air. So the easiest way to lower spin is to swing softer. Yes. And so that's what I'll do. That's my main focus is, okay, if I know what my normal swing feels like at 85%, all right, what does it feel like at 70%? What does that do to the ball flight? And then the second thing is, as I'm going through the impact zone, I'm really trying to feel like my hands stay in front of the club. Yeah, a lot of shaft length. Right, so like what we were talking about earlier, the opposite of hitting the golf ball high, mm -hmm. I need my hands to stay in front of the club head as long as I possibly can. Yes. So that angle of attack stays a little bit lower. Yes. And then my abbreviated finish is going to look like Tommy Fleetwood. So, you know, we're trying to hit this golf ball low here, and low is relative for everybody, but yes. I'm trying to hit this golf ball under the wind or just kind of at, on a window that I want to be repeatable. Uh -huh. So stock swing, stock setup for me. And all I'm trying to do is control, again, the speed at which I swing at and really abbreviating and holding my finish. What club do you have there? And that's eight. Yeah, see, that's pretty low for an eight. And again, relative, right? Right. And I think I think for me, it's like that sound it makes when it comes off the club face. But for, for me, one of the checkpoints that I pay attention to is, again, where am I finishing? Yes. If I can pay attention. I know that my club is more here with hands lower instead of you know you look like you had the hands up here a little bit more and there's yes. obviously a, a a conscious effort to make that happen so i'm really just paying attention to again that that speed of my swing through the impact zone and making sure that my hands are all kind of staying in front of that club face yeah and i i think with that you know a couple shots that come to mind or you know when i would hit this would be into the wind yep. Trying to flight it more for distance control. What's maybe another one that comes to mind when you would hit it lower? I mean, distance control for sure. I think something that a lot of people will get in the habit of that's obviously a bad habit is it's into the wind and they've got the the, the club that goes the distance that they're they're shooting their, their shot at and they try and just hit one either up into the wind or like we were talking about earlier, back of the stance and trying to hit down on it. So definitely controlling distances, right? Controlling that speed of the swing under the wind so that it doesn't spin too much. Also, like, I think the easiest way to look at it is just if I was looking at this from face on, like the faster I swing here, like I didn't consciously do anything to my yep. release and of my you club, club head but my off. club wants to get in front of my hands the faster I swing. So if I'm trying to control the speed at my swing, I know it's a lot easier for my hands to stay in front of that club head. Yeah, and I think one, one thing to note on that, you know, a lower shot is gonna, require the player to be in a little bit more flexion, butts back, chest is down to keep that shaft length. Yes. Versus a higher shot, you're gonna see a little bit more extension and it's not so much right, the thrusting extension, it's Correct. more extension up. Yeah. Because that lets the club lever come out. You get more of that neutral shaft angle, kicks the club. Correct. It's not it's not inappropriate extension at all. It's understanding that for certain shots to hit requires more flexion or if you're trying to hit a higher golf shot it requires a little bit more extension yes playing around with that is definitely an easy way to figure out okay what does it feel like to first get into that extension feel mm -hmm. two what does that do to the ball flight yes right so i think especially like we talked about in the last video of, of shot shaping left and right right to left the same thing goes with, with trajectories you go play around with it like you're going to find 
a trajectory that you hit that is pretty easy to produce yes. on a, a repeatable scale, figure what that is and then just kind of roll with it. And then just, you know, practice this on the range or practice this on the golf course. And at, at some point you're going to have certain windows that you hit certain clubs out of mm -hmm. that are easier to produce and, and give you a level of consistency and confidence when you get to the golf course. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this one or any other ones, please like and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on any social media platforms that we have. Um, a lot of stuff coming up here down in Arizona. November is going to be our first winter golf school. It's going to be at Whirlwind Golf Club, the three-day golf school, all-inclusive. All those details will be down in the uh, description below. We're going to have golf schools here from November all the way through April. Check the website. We'd love to see you down here, and we'll be having more videos to you guys real soon.